Hey guys, it's been a while since my last update. Um, <laughs> I believe my last one was around 21 weeks on testosterone, and today we are just a day off, a uh, day over uh, 33 weeks on T. So um, it's been a while. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to jump in. I do apologize. It's probably going to be a decently long, probably a 20 minute video ish. Got a decent amount of changes to talk about and a decent amount of things that have happened in the last three weeks or three months kind of updates to, to let you know about and talk about. So, um, jumping into the physical changes, <clears throat> facial hair, obviously you can see the little bit of like douchey goatee kind of thing that I got going on here. But I'm proud of it. I've got I've got visible facial hair. That's the main thing. Um, the goatee area has been growing for about ten weeks. Um, I'm still contemplating on whether I want to kind of like trim it a bit more underneath or just let it grow because it's really quite patchy. Uh, you can see a better version on um, of to show the actual physical hair on my Instagram if you haven't checked it out because there's some here. I promise you, it just doesn't show up so well on the video. Uh, so this has been growing for about 10 weeks, and my sideburns have been growing for about three or four. Um, but I trim things very, very frequently. Like uh, I, I trim at least once a week, minimum. Um, and I just finished trimming this up the other day, so um, you can't even really see them probably. But I have to trim my right side up frequently because my left side, for whatever reason, takes half. It takes twice as long as my right side to grow. So. This will be all poofed out, and then I've got like four little hairs, and it's kind of annoying. So, um, actually, I just keep that trimmed and meticulous. Uh, I've got obviously body hairs definitely bumped up since then. I actually have some decent amount of little vis visible chest hairs going on. It started off with one that I used to call Harry, and then he fell out, and it was Harry 2.0, and then he fell out, and then I'm just Harry extended, and now I've got them all. So, I've got a bushel of Harry's. <laughs> um, I've noticed that there, it's, you can't see in the video, again, Instagram for better photos, but, um, I started noticing, like, little baby hairs are starting to actually go all the way up to here, and if I look closely, it might start to go out to along my shoulder and, like, above my pecs, which, um, if that happens, I will definitely trim, because, personally, like, I'm not a fan of the hair on, on my arm, shoulder area. I like to keep it trimmed and decent looking, because... Yeah, um, <clears throat> whatever other face, sorry, I'm just looking at my, my list so I don't go off topic, so, uh, obviously you notice my voice is, has deepened quite a bit, and I will be doing voice comparison from actually my first video ever posted on, uh, Tumblr, or on Tumblr, on YouTube here, uh, from about four years ago when I was 19, it was like my coming out video, and, uh, <laughs> I watched it and I laughed because I can't believe how much my voice has changed, um, Obviously, I hear it every day, so I don't I don't notice as much. But I've been told a lot lately that it's definitely getting deeper, uh, and and when I laugh, I apparently sound a lot more like my brother, <laughs> my older brother now, which is pretty phenomenal considering he's only my half brother. So, uh, goes to show my mom has really strong genetics. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy about it. I still get the occasional cracking out, but I don't. It's only if I try and go like really deep, really low, uh, or sorry, really deep, really high pitched. High pitched, I'm always cracking out. That's just impossible to do now. Um, or if uh, like my um, my throat is really dry, I will crack out. Obviously, hi, Willow has come to say hello. This is my girl Willow. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Are you pretty? It's a pretty puppy. Are you a pretty puppy? Yeah, you a big suck. She did very well at her last checkup. She's in perfect health, and she's the perfect weight. She's partially the perfect puppy. She doesn't listen always, but I still love her. You want to come up? You want to come up and finish the video? Okay, lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Yeah. All right. So uh, my feet have actually gotten a bit bigger as well. I don't know if they've gotten taller or wider or what it is. I don't really notice much of a difference other than the way that my um <laughs> the way that my uh shoes my old shoes fit they basically felt like they were exploding off of me um we're about to my feet were gonna explode out so i've had to buy some new boots and i've had to buy some new shoe uh, new runners and i will have to buy some all new 
casual shoes uh, come next year and when I can afford it uh, for that extra expense. So um, it's been an expensive change uh, when it comes to muscle growth and feet growth and body growth. But I, it's definitely worth it. Um, my weight has been the same. I haven't really changed weight-wise. I'm still maintaining between 130 and 135, um, more towards 135. But uh, I've lost muscle definition at the very least in my stomach. Um, I still have my upper definition, like the upper oblique area. But when it comes basically past my belly button, it's just a belly now. I'm getting a little teeny tiny tummy. It's okay. It's winter time. I'm just hibernating. I'm stocking up. Um, heat retention is, is upped, uh, which is funny to say when I'm wearing a giant sweater, but I'm just in a comfy kind of day. Um, I've noticed like if I'm outside for like five or ten minutes in minus two to minus five, which used to be like way too cold to be out in a t-shirt for me, doesn't even bother me. Um, you know, it, it takes a lot to get me cold. Um, <clears throat> For the emotions, I I find like I'm obviously irritable near like the last day, day or two before my shot, but um, my levels are checked out, so I'm good. Um, it's funny because my my roommate Riley, obviously, we compare notes because he's three months ahead of, on T uh, compared to me, but um, we compare notes about like our emotions and and changes and everything, and he. He was a pretty emotional guy before, like, it's not like he really cried a lot, but he, it was never an issue for him to cry before, and it was the opposite for me, and now that we're on T, it's like, I'll notice, like, I'll be watching Netflix alone, and something that's, like, not even all that emotional happens, and I'm like, I almost start to tear up, and I'm like, what? The? It's so weird, but, um, and then he is now the opposite. He finds it's really difficult to cry, so it's like, switched for us I guess um, but it goes to show what testosterone can do right uh, I'm not like I'm bawling at everything I'm not high, crazy emotional it's just I find like I'm more sensitive to things I've, uh, than before I've noticed but uh, it's not a bad thing I, hey man guys cry right <laughs> um, but I think that's about it for physical changes like uh, my, my leg hair is still patchy and lots of things are going to change. Um, my chest obviously isn't changing, but hopefully once uh, my shoulder's better I can start working out and then I can, you know, get some pecs and hopefully not have to go for top surgery because I would prefer not to if I don't have to. Um, other general updates, I did send off my gender marker paperwork about a month ago so hopefully I should be getting that within the next week or two no later than that unless they find another problem with it um, anybody that is sending off uh, paperwork to change their gender marker in Ontario I'll just give you a quick heads up because I did have mine sent back um, and I had to write a letter and blah 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 and send it back off but basically I checked off a box that I shouldn't have that said uh, the question I'm paraphrasing from what I remember was essentially do you have a certified copy of your birth certificate, a certified copy of something? I can't remember exactly the terminology, but to me that sounded, and I was, mind you, I was medicated, so maybe I was off, but um, it, to me it sounds like, do you, is, are you sure that you have a certified copy? Like it's, it is the certified copy, not like a photocopy of your birth certificate. That's what I saw it as, right? But that specifically means it's the long form it's um a different it's a secondary uh birth certificate than the one that you usually have that has more information like your mother's maiden name your father's name blah 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 blah, blah place of birth the long certificate kind of deal um which i don't have so uh if you don't have it click no just check no just forewarning you there but um Fingers crossed that uh, gets approved. I don't see why not, but my, my name change, I didn't have any issues. But um, that'll be nice, not having to see Miss Devin Samuelson and get misgendered here and there, and, you know, that'll be great. Sorry, she's just staring at me. She's just staring at me. No. What? 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 She's distracting me. She's so cute. She's so cute. Um, 
Yeah, uh, another thing, Riley kind of brought up a possible issue, but I've cleared that up and uh, just give you the heads up. If you're going to get your gender marker changed and you're worried that your hysterectomy or any other surgery uh, might not, that, that you will need that is like female oriented, female bodied, you know, um, that if you're worried that, sorry, OHIP isn't going to cover it because your gender marker now claims you as male or vice versa, your gender marker claims you as female and you're going for like a, anything, any, any kind of SRS or whatever, uh, and you're worried that it might de be denied because of uh, your gender marker, obviously whoever is referring you for said surgery or said procedure uh, has to explain why. And if it's uh, under the basis of, you know, you're questioning why because of the gender, they will explain that you're transgender and they have no right to deny you. At the very least, in Ontario, they have no right to deny you, and that's right from my doctor's mouth. So uh, that's good. You don't have to worry about that. Um, and speaking of hysterectomies, I will be having my first physical um, ever and pap smear uh, within about two weeks. So that's a bit nerve-wracking. It's more awkward, I think, for me because... I mean, it, we'll see how the day goes, whether I'll be extremely dysphoric, but it's just, it's with my family doctor that I've known since I was like four or five. So that's kind of why it's a bit more awkward for me, but I'm very comfortable with him. I trust him more than anything. So um, that is very important when it comes to uh, getting your, getting your physical. And it is very important to get your physical. I understand that it's kind of like the elephant in the room when it comes to trans men health that most people just do not want to talk about it because it's awkward and it's dis it causes dysphoria. Um, you don't like to think about those parts, but I mean, personally for me, I um, my mom is a three-time cancer survivor, so I have a high risk of contracting uh, cervical, breast, uterine, or any kind of reproductive cancer. Um, you know, there is a higher risk uh, when you are on testosterone for that because... Basically, your body sees it as a foreign object, right? So you do have to be very careful. And once you're on testosterone, uh, you have the uh, you no longer sorry have these symptoms and the possible warning signs because you you eventually stop your cycle, right? So for me, I haven't had my cycle since July. Um, it, we're sitting in uh, November now, so it's been a long while and I will not have any, as many warning signs. So I just want to be sure that I'm a-okay. Um, especially after, uh, you know, things that could have caused issues as well. So, um, be sure you go for that checkup. It is, is vital to your, the importance to your health. It's once a year. If you can afford to do so, if you can physically do so, go do so. And if you need support through that, don't hesitate to shoot me a message in any way uh, for any reason. If you just want to say hi, I am always available to talk to anyone, especially my trans brothers. I'm always here for you or trans, trans females out there, my trans sisters. <laughs> um, I'm always here for you as well. And anybody, anybody in the community or outside, I'm always here for people. So um, uh, next really thing to update um, is kind of a sad one. My... Uh, my grandfather, he um, he passed away in the beginning of the last month in October, um, just just shy of 75. But he's been suffering from a lot of health complications for the last 15 years after a major accident he was in. So he's been he's been in a lot of pain and suffering for as long as I can remember. So um, as hard as it is to lose, basically the only other blood relative that I get along with besides my mom and my brother. Um, I'm just glad he's no longer in pain. So um, I've started physiotherapy. I've just started my second week of physiotherapy, a uh, minimum of six weeks. I believe it'll be more because the last time I did physio, I did 10 weeks, three times a week, and the injury wasn't even nearly as bad as it is now. So um, we'll see because my insurance company only wants to approve me for um, doing like stationary work which will make things work worse so i will see i have no idea like my goal is to hopefully try and work part-time and go to school but um we'll see come the new year and and going into uh like the september what would be september um 
semester whether I'll be able to. We'll see. Um, but it's, so far, it's doing well. I'm not as tense. I'm still in pain every day, obviously. And my off days, I, I get more headaches because I'm releasing tension and everything like that. But so far, so good. I'm starting to build on strengthening. Um, she gave me kind of like a partial-ish diagnosis, better than what I've had previously. Um, basically, my AC joint is kind of pulling everything out of whack. We don't know why because my MRI and my um, my x-rays didn't show any issues. So she doesn't really want to go for any further testing because the way that the health plan is, basically it has to be a like possible life-threatening issue for you to go for a... A scan <laughs> um, because good old oh hip um, anyways uh, so my AC joint is pulling things out of whack and kind of what is causing all these issues um, it's partially pulled out uh, three possibly four of my vertebrae my uh, T1 C5 possibly C6 and C7 because she said I can't remember if she said between C5 and C7 or just C5 and C7 so as well as two of my ribs, my fifth and seventh rib on my right side, maybe on my left side, I'm not sure, she just said fifth and seventh ribs, so, um, it explains why I'm in pain, um, my rotator cuff is extremely weakened, um, to the point where, like, it's, that is also causing a lot of the numbness and, and pain, um, my grip and my right hand is 25, 25 pounds per pressure less than my left um, so hopefully with physio I'll gain some grip and some function and I can start working out again and go back on the bow flex and gain muscle and, you know, get better. <laughs> um, lastly, really the last thing that I have to update about is, uh, what happened last night. Um, basically my, myself, my older brother, uh, my roommate Riley and two other gentlemen were, um, awarded for uh, were recognized as heroes essentially for saving the lives of um, the residents at my old apartment building when it caught on fire last year. Um, I mean, recognition obviously was not the reason that we did it, um, but it it was it was a beautiful little ceremony. It was uh, very humbling, and I was very grateful to be a part of that. Um, you know, I I was really nervous because I had no idea what to expect. So, like I was up kind of listening to the mayor explain a brief kind of partial description of what happened. Um, I mean, fortunately, I thought I only called 911. I did more than that, but whatever. I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not in it for the recognition. It's, it's about, it's about being there. Like, um, I guess I'm fortunate enough that I do have that kind of instinct in me that I don't think about it. I can shut off any stresses and anything that's happening because, I mean, I've been in accidents. I've been uh, first responders to accidents before with my mom when I was a kid. And, um, you know, I've dealt with a lot of different emergencies, watching my grandfather and every kind of physical issue. I've watched him, you know, the night of getting hit by a transport truck after on a snowmobile. Like, things don't bother me that normally would bother other people. So, luckily, I've been kind of trained to do these kind of things and not think about it and my brother is the same thing it must just kind of run in the family like we've been first responders my brothers um helped citizen arrest on ttc you know it's just being at the right place at the right time and having the right kind of mentality and just jumping into it that i'm fortunate for that and um it it was just the whole experience it will i will never forget not just last night but everything to do with the fire um, it could have ended terribly. It could have ended with not just one fatality of the woman in the apartment building, but I guarantee there would have been a few more because the fire got out of hand extremely quickly. It was within a few moments that just flames started freaking flying up. And um, again, right place at the right time because my brother, myself, and I, we were the ones that recognized it. Like I walked out and I knew something was wrong. I heard the fire alarm and I kind of dismissed it for a moment because they go off for you burn toast and the damn things go off. But I knew something was wrong when I smelt and I turned around and I just said, holy crap, fire. And my brother went and jumped in and jumped in in time. But we were actually running 15 minutes late to a show. 
So had we not have been running 15 minutes late, what would have happened? And I, I think about that on a regular basis, you know, what would have happened if diff- things played out differently. But it, it's just amazing what people, it shows you what people can do in these kind of disasters. Um, you know, I've, I've struggled over time and there are moments that I do still struggle with my faith of humanity. And uh, that definitely helped me restore it because not only my fellow residents, we all kind of work together to get everyone out. But afterwards, um, myself and a few others, um, I, you know, I was helping. I took water from my mom's car. That is a that is something I will always recommend now to always keep a case of water in your car. Because in this emergency situation, people were coming out with smoke inhalation. I, you know, thought we need water right away. It didn't, you know, passing out water and... There were a few, there was one woman that was in shock because she was the one above the apartment on fire and she heard my voice yelling fire. That's what woke her up. She was asleep. So it's like uh, we had residents of the adjacent apartment building in the same complex there um, that out of pocket, they helped, you know, feed us uh, through meetings and stuff like that. And the people that were um, staying close, they helped shelter animals uh, that of people that couldn't take them where they were staying while they were waiting for, you know, either repair repairs that never really were. I don't even know if they were completed on the old apartment building, but um, or to be displaced into a new, uh, new home. And you know, my my mom and I afterwards we did what we could to um, help the residents as well that lost a lot of the people on the second floor lost their their clothing their furniture their beds like there were people living without beds and we had great um, local companies that helped donate furniture like brand new beds and furniture and helped with delivering and you know we had people donating funds it was just it was a wonderful thing to see how many people came together for one basically small ish fire right it it changed. It changed my life. It changed my perspective, and I. It's a day I will never forget. I'm. I'm very grateful for everything that happened as it did, and and uh, the events following. Right. Um, it, it's. Just, I. I. I can't grasp it. It's just. Uh, yeah. It's. Uh, ah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't put it into words. Essentially. Um, I had it really. I, that was the last thing that I had to update you on. Um, I understand that. We're leading up into the holidays, and um, that's that's a difficult time for some people. Um, but I will always be here for anybody struggling with dysphoria, um, the unsupportive family members. Just know you're not alone. Know you're never alone. You got you got people around you. Um, you know, even if they're silently there, we're here. You're you're not alone. So don't hesitate to shoot me a message if you need me. I see, there's a little voice crack there. Yeah. Um, I apologize I'm going to ask you a small favor if you can uh, especially because the holidays are coming up Uh, my mom, I'm very proud of her she's just opened, uh, started up in September uh, her own business with her fiance called Buddha Frog Healing Arts, I will leave a link down uh, down below Um, they're on Facebook there for their Facebook and they make some wonderful creams Uh, she started developing it when she was uh, a geriatric nurse um, you know, natural base that was, you know, uh, not abrasive that would work well for a lot of skin adhesions and bed sores and, you know, eczema and things like that. She, that she dealt with shingles was uh, being a geriatric nurse. She dealt with a lot. So, uh, and she's just perfected the formula to help with any kind of dermatitis, any kind of skin issue, or just for regular, like winter is terrible on your skin. So if you're looking for a good gift idea, I definitely recommend to check them, check it out. Um, Personally, for me, like, I don't deal with the worst acne, but as you can see, I obviously have some scarring. It's much better than it was. I was breaking out three or four, three or four, and like a group here along the sides, and I haven't had a pimple along my anywhere other than my chin in the last like two months because of this cream, um, because it's really helped not only heal, but remove the scarring and everything like that. It's really helped with irritation i find my neck is always itchy and irritated and dried out um now that i've started growing facial hair so that's really helped with the uh, irritation it's helped with my um, eczema uh, that i get on my hands my hands get really dried out and um 
intra uh, we're currently working on like body scrubs and everything like that so i'm her uh i'm her her guinea pig so the stuff that we're working on we're working on perfecting it but uh one of the scrubs i use um it's a sea salt scrub and uh if that's going to be thrown into the production of their their company there i definitely recommend it because it's really helped with my back knee that's something that i've had an issue with so uh check them out buddha frog healing arts again as always thank you so much for watching I will uh, probably see you come the new year for some more updates and uh, tell you about my holidays. And um, as always, like I said, thanks for watching. Peace, love, serenity. Take it easy. Stay safe and happy holidays, everyone. Happy New Year. Bye.